A very good evening to all uh, present here. I would like to introduce Ms. Renu Mehta, the Area Director, South Asia from Smile Tree. Uh, over to you, Renu, ma'am. Thank you, Shrutika. Good evening, everyone. Uh, you may all know that Smile Train is world's largest cleft-focused NGO, and uh, we support safe and quality cleft care to all the children that are born with this uh, anomaly uh, in India and worldwide. Uh, in India, we work through a network of our partner hospitals. Uh, currently, we are supporting 125 such hospitals across the country. And till date, uh, in over two decades of us working over here in India, we have supported over 7 lakh cleft surgeries. Spile Drain has been in collaboration with Foxy since 2019, and we are extremely grateful for this uh, partnership. Uh, today, I would like to share a new initiative uh, that Smile Train has taken, which is focused in Maharashtra. Uh, we are calling it Maha Smiles, Cleft Care for Every Child. This is a CSR collaboration between Bajaj Pinsir and Smile Train India. And this partnership is to build awareness and support treatment for children uh, with clefts in Maharashtra specific. Uh, we plan to enable uh, 8,000 8, life-changing surgeries to children in need in Maharashtra uh, in coming three years. And this will also help us create awareness about the importance of timely treatment and timelines of cleft, uh, of cleft treatment. This web series that we have with the EMOGS and Science Integra, we aim to facilitate resources amongst the AMOX community about diagnosis and timelines, and also to build linkage, linkages between the members and smile train treatment centers so that children who require these interventions and the expecting parents can get timely help and counseling. So uh, in Maharashtra, currently we are supporting 11 uh, treatment centers, which is across the 10 cities. And uh, my request to all of you who have logged in today and are attending this webinar, if you come across, please refer these children and parents to the nearest uh, center. Uh, we also have a toll-free cleft helpline, which is 1-800-103-8301. You could also reach us at www.smiletrainindia.org. And today, it is my privilege to introduce uh, Dr. Rashmi Kahar over here. Dr. Rashmi uh, has been instrumental. She is the chairperson uh, of AMOG's High Risk Pregnancy Committee. She dons many hats. She has been. Thank you, Renu, madam. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. So over to you, Dr. Rashmi. Thank you, Renu, Madam, uh, for all those kind words, and uh, I'm all yours. Smile and uh, is a, and I'm associated with Smile Trends since last three four webinars. Yes. Yeah. Very good afternoon to all the respected seniors and their friends. We are so happy to present before you. This is the third webinar of Mass Smiles. This project is run by Smile Train in association with of Amox. Amox is an association of obstetricians and gynecological societies of Maharashtra. And today to grace this webinar, we have none other than our most beloved Foxy Secretary General, Dr. Madhuri Patel, Madam. I would like to introduce Dr. Madhuri Patel, Madam. She is the chief guest of today's webinar. Madam is Secretary General of Foxy and she has been joint secretary in 2009. Madam is committee member of Pigo Pritambar and she is associate editor of Jogi. She is honorary clinical associate at Wadi Hospital and consultant at Police Hospital at Mumbai. And she is visiting consultant at many hospitals. She is former professor and HOD OBGYN of ASIS, PGI, MSR, MG, MSG, Mumbai, and James Mumbai, India. With this short introduction, we would like to welcome Dr. Madhuri Patel, madam, and we definitely would like to hear from her. Hello, Dr. Rashmi. Hello, ma'am. Yeah. Hello. Thank you very much, Dashmi, for your kind and warm words. Respected our president, Amok, Dr. Rajendra Padeshi, my very great friend since last 30 years. 
and we have worked together in foxy i as a treasurer and he as a vice president and we had a great time then of course dr kiran kutter he is other than my good friend president elect amox we have also worked together then we have dr sujata dalvi from mumbai society and amox secretary then dr sujit konkar chairperson fetal medicine dr monica dr rashmi dr vivek virkar president sogs dr meera gunjotikar secretary sogs and then our speakers dr pratibha and dr punit so today is a very good occasion this is a third webinar e cme webinar about the clap palate and the clap leaf we have heard you know dr avya and renu mehta and how smile train is doing it is an ngo and doing so much of work and they are doing free of course now today's topic how to diagnose antenatally and once the baby is out with this defect how to treat them that day we are going to learn as all of us are aware that nowadays the clap lip and clap palate are so much you know rare we find but they are there and we have to take care of it because it causes social uh, problem because the children are shy and the parents are also shy as far as the clap lip is concerned there is no harm to the baby but clap palate can create a problem with the breathing feeding hearing infection teeth problem so if we can better solve this problem as early as possible and i am really happy and i congratulate dr rajendra and entire team dr sujit and rashmi and monica kiran and sujata an excellent e webinar series on palate clap palate and clap lip and i must also congratulate smile train where they have spread over 87 countries and in india So today's guest of honor is none other than our president amongst Dr. Rajendra Singh Paradeshi sir. Sir is president amongst and has been six times the best paper awardee in Fox's national and international congresses. To his credit are 27 papers and he has been faculty speaker at many national and international conferences. I would like to welcome Dr. Rajendra Singh Paradeshi sir and we would like to hear from you sir. Sir is there? Dr. Pardesi, you are on mute. You are on mute. Sir, please unmute yourself. Hello. Hello. Yes, and now you're audible. Hello. 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 Sir, now you are audible. Am I audible? Sir, you are audible. Respected Dr. Madhuri Patel, ma'am. Our AMOGS office bearers, Dr. Kiran Kurtakoti, Dr. Sujata Dalvi, and our AMOGS pillars and ever active, ever smiling chair persons, Dr. Sujit Kondkar, Dr. Monika Ubbardhan, and Dr. Rasmi Kaha. First, I wish to express my sincere thanks to Dr. Madhuri Patel, our spirit of Oxy, for addressing our webinar. And also, I am expressing sincere thanks to Smile Strain, Dr. Venumeta, and the team for giving this uh, nice initiative, you can see, social initiative of cleft leaf and cleft palate. So again, wishing every success to this webinar, I again congratulate Dr. Sujit Kondkar and team for organizing this webinar with Solapur Obijoy Society with the experts faculties, eminent faculties like Dr. Pratibha Baldava and Dr. Pune Batra and chairpersons Dr. Vivek Virkar, Dr. Mina Gunjotikar. I think this is going to be a great webinar. I wish every success to Dr. Sujit Konkar 
for his future endeavor in FOXI as chairperson for Imaging Science Committee. I wish every success to Dr. Rashmi Kar for her future endeavor in FOXI as practical obstetric committee. Wishing every success to this webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Over you to much. Rashmi. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for all your kind blessings to us. The panel Ma has joined back. We can take her. Yes. Madhuri ma'am, uh, can you please unmute yourself? Ma'am, please unmute. We can't hear you. Hello. Yes, yes ma'am. Now you're audible. I'm audible. Yes, okay, yes, so I, I just want to, uh, you know, you heard me, but I want to say I must congratulate Dr. Rajendra Singh Parvesi, Dr. Sujit Kumar, Dr. Kiran, Dr. Sai. You know, Sujata, Rashmi, Monica, all of you, you are doing a great work. And, you know, we as an uh, Foxy and Emoxa, we are the same, you know, members. We are working for the women's health. And today's seminar, this webinar is on clap palette and clap flame, which is not that, you know, common now, which we used to see in the past, because we used to consider as a genetic. But now there are other factors also, environmental, diabetes, you know, smoking, etc. are also there. And we can diagnose this condition many times during antenatal period <laughs> and postnatal immediately we can diagnose. When we can diagnose antenatally, we can counsel the patient and the relative and, you know, we can do the surgery as early as possible. So there is no social stigma as far as the clap lip is concerned. As far as clap palate is concerned, that is the most dangerous part which can cause, you know, feeding problem which can cause hearing problem, which can cause speech problem, infection, teeth problem. So they are to be dealt very well when it is associated with the clap palate. So we don't want any, you know, for any child to suffer, any parents to suffer with this uh, abnormality. And I'm really happy that Smile Train NGO is doing excellent work. They are spread over at 87 countries. And in India, they are doing lots of work with free cause. So this is this is really, you know, remarkable. And I wish all of you the best luck for the future and our. And as Dr. Padeshi said, they want to join the Foxy Committee chair. You all are most welcome. And for that, the criteria, all of you are aware, at least two years of members in any committee. And then you can apply for the committee chair. So I wish all of you the best luck and once again congratulations to all of you. At the end, I would like to quote Dr. Benson, Nelson Mandela. Education is the best weapon. When used, can change the world. So dear friends, let's use this education to update ourselves and give the best to our patient and the children. Thank you once again for inviting me as a chief guest. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for all the kind words and your blessings, ma'am. We would strive very hard to reach to your expectation. Thank you very much. So these were the very kind words from our Secretary General Foxy, Dr. Madhuri Patel, madam. And uh, moving forward, I would like to introduce Dr. Sujit Kornkar. Uh, he is the convener of today's webinar and he is OBGYN consultant at Shrinas uh, Hospital, which is a FOXI approved USG training center. He is the chairperson of Pital Medicine Committee of MOX and also secretary of Society of Pital Medicine Marathwada chapter. We welcome you, sir. Today's webinar wouldn't have been completed if uh, we were not helped by Dr. Monica Desai. She is the coordinator of today's webinar. She is consultant obstetrician and gynecologist at Mangalya Nursing Home and Atharva Fertility Center. She is the chairperson of Public Awareness Committee of MOX 
and website coordinator for AMOX 1820, youth coordinator AMOX 2022. She has been executive member PAC committee 2009 to 22. Thank you, Monica, for all your help. And I would like to extend a very warm welcome to you to today's webinar as a coordinator. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your appreciation. And thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, Parveshi, sir, and Madhuri, ma'am, too. Thank you, Monica. So now we have a very good scientific program. And moving towards it, I would like to share that we have two eminent speakers, Dr. Pratibha Baldava and Dr. Puni Vatra, and two very esteemed chairpersons, Dr. Vivek Pirkar sir and Dr. Meena Gunjotikar madam. I would like to introduce Dr. Vivek Pirkar sir to the house. Sir is president of Solapur Obstetrics and Gynecological Society. He has presented various papers at state and national conferences and is a winner of best paper prizes at ASUG Kanpur and AMOX. He has been worked as a lecturer in Obijiva department at BMMC. Welcome, sir. Our next chairperson is Dr. Mina Gunjotikar, madam. Thank you, madam. Welcome, sir. Dr. Mina Gunjotikar. Thank you, madam. Yes, sir. Dr. Meena Gunjotikar, madam, is secretary. She is of Solapur Obstetrics and Gynecological Society. She is a chairperson of today's session. And Madam is practicing since 18 years as consultant obstetrician and gynecologist, and she's an honorary consultant at SSNGI with Hospital. Uh, Madam was in emergency, but I hope uh, she has promised to join the webinar uh, as soon as possible. Uh, Shutika has Madam joined, Dr. Meena, Madam. Uh, no, ma'am, not she yet. Hasn't joined. Uh, I uh, can I uh, request Virkar sir only to introduce Pratibha ma'am, and uh, once Madam joins, then she can give the concluding remarks, ma'am. Virkar sir, Madam, 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 please uh, put forward the uh, CBO, Dr. Pratibha Shutika. Yes. Virkar sir, please introduce Dr. Pratibha till then. Uh, can you unmute yourself? I think uh, Virkar sir is not able to hear. Okay, uh, Monica, will you please introduce? Oh, it's okay. Me? I think uh, 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 it is a proud privilege to introduce Dr. Pratibha Baldeva. Uh, she's a consultant at Sh Cholapur at SS Baldeva Neurosciences. She's a gold medalist um, in DFP, as well as uh, she is a fellow of the American College of OBGY. She has been the treasurer yeah, and I the think, honorary uh, secretary yes, of uh, Solapur OBGY Society. Over to you, Dr. Pratibha. Yes. Uh, am I audible? Yes. yes, yes. Thank you so much, dear Monica, for introducing me. Uh, I always feel at home whenever Monica calls me and gives me an invitation, and I'm always ready to join in. Uh, I feel it's a very important topic that we are discussing today, the cleft lip and cleft palate. Uh, should I start with my screen sharing? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Is the screen visible? Yes, ma'am. It is visible. Hello? Okay. Yes. So today we are going to speak uh, or discuss in short about cleft lip and cleft palate. Uh, is the slide is not moving ahead. Mm, the slides are not scrolling. I don't know. Okay, Pratibha, you can send all the slides to me. I will send it to Shutika. Shutika, okay, okay, yeah, they are moving now. Okay, okay, yes, it's done. Okay, so today we're going to discuss in short about cleft lip and cleft palates. It's a very important topic because it is something which is related to the newborns and uh, parents, when they see such a thing, they, uh, they really become very scared and uh, they become worried about the child's future. So let us uh, go in depth about what is cleft lip and cleft palate. Cleft lip and cleft palate are congenital malformations resulting from the failure of fusion of the maxillary processes during the intrauterine development. I'm going to speak in short about the antenatal part of about cleft lip and cleft palate. 
the defect may either occur alone or together. So these are some pictures. Here you can see a bilateral complete cleft, whereas here we are only seeing a unilateral complete cleft. So how common is it? Approximately 1 in 700 children born have either a cleft lip or a cleft palate or both. What are the complications of this? Complication is that the child may have problems with feeding, ear disease, speech, and socialization. Individuals with cleft lip also face many middle ear infections, which will eventually lead to hearing loss. So then what can we do during the antenatal period? So I want to divide the speech into four things. That is, what is the etiology for cleft lip, cleft palate? How do we diagnose it antenatally? And what do we do when we diagnose it antenatally? So first, let's look into the etiology. Etiology of cleft lip and cleft palate is usually multifocal. It is due to developmental delay, that is a midline facial defect, which is caused because of either a growth hormone defect or teeth development defect. Or it could be genetic in case like Mendelian or multifactorial again. Or in twin study, it has been found that 33% of identical twins have a cleft lip or a cleft palate and 7% of non-identical twins also have either a cleft lip or a cleft palate. This cleft lip or cleft palate is also associated with many syndromes, as many as 400. The chromosomal anomalies associated with Tau syndrome, trisomy 18, that is Edwards syndrome, trisomy 21, that is Down syndrome, velocardiofacial, that is 22Q11 syndrome, some inherited syndromes like Stickler syndrome, Trechocolin syndrome, Van der Wood syndromes, and some non-inherited syndromes like the Pierre-Robin sequence. 50% also have a syndrome like a Stickler syndrome or again a velocardiofacial syndrome. So whenever there is a cleft lip or cleft palate, we have to see whether it is either an isolated finding or it is associated with some syndrome along with it. So this happens to be the etiology. Now let us understand a little bit about what is, how is the palate formed while, it, while the baby is intrauterine. It is seen that the upper lip is, up, the, this is the upper lip. These are the nasal uh, openings. And this is the lateral palatal shells. And here is the median nasal coena. So what happens is there is fusion which occurs from the lateral to the medial side. And the fusion while it is occurring, the nasal uh, uh, is uh, separated from the mouth cavity. The nasal cavity is separated from the mouth cavity because of the palate. The anterior part of the palate is called as a hard palate. Whereas the posterior part of the palate is called as a soft palate. So this is the upper lip the gum, that is the teeth where they develop, the alveolar development. And this is the margin of the palatial set. This is the palatal rape. And in here, here, so this development all is happening somewhere between six weeks, seven weeks, nine weeks, and by the 12 weeks, actually the entire palate should have been formed. So by 12 to 13 weeks, usually the entire palate formation is complete. So this is again the development of palate as we can see the palate fuses from lateral to medial side and it separates the oral cavity from the nasal cavity by around 10 to 12 weeks so this is again a very beautiful picture depicting the development of various processes so nasal pit la medial nasal processes and lateral nasal processes the primary palate the nasal septum and the secondary palate so this happens by around 11 to 12 weeks the entire palate is formed and the lip development also is complete by around 12 to 13 weeks. So what do we know? We know that primary palate is form, is consists of upper lip and alveolar ridge. It develops between 4th and the 8th week of the gestation. The secondary palate is consists of hard and soft palates. And it develops between 8th and 12th week of gestation. This development can be interrupted by abnormal genetic conditions or some environmental agents like when patient has taken some drugs or is associated with some syndromes. So what causes cleft lip and cleft palate? It is the non-fusion of these lateral and medial folds that gives rise to this defect in between, giving rise to cleft lip and cleft palate. So what do we need to do for this? These are the various theories, that is classical theory of his and mesodermal reinforcement theory. I will not go into the details of this. So now we know what is the etiology now. So now let us come to how do we diagnose it? 
antenatally ultrasound is the and the criteria to diagnose cleft lip and cleft palate. Cleft lip or cleft palate is always detected prenatally during a routine ultrasound. It can be picked up by a good radiologist or a good sonologist as early as 12 to 13 weeks. If discovered, the mother may be put into a high-risk pregnancy category. More ultrasounds need to be performed to verify and confirm the diagnosis and also to find whether it is isolated cleft lip, cleft palate or is it associated with other syndromes or other uh, trisomies as we have discussed before. Physical examination at birth of the mouth, nose, palate confirms whether it's a cleft lip, cleft palate, isolated, unilateral, bilateral, complete or incomplete. Medical tests may be done to rule out other possible health conditions. So this just let's just see a minute into the ultrasound. Uh, I will just go to the, yeah. This is the sagittal picture. As we all do a 2D ultrasound, we can see that in the sagittal picture, we see the sagittal picture shows the forehead. This is the forehead, then the nose, then the upper lip and the lower lip and the chin. So this is a complete normal baby, which is being seen in the sagittal view. So here we can see that both the upper lip and lower lip are seen. This palate can be seen as a transverse ridge and it is extending just below the nose. So this is a good normal baby without a cleft lip or a cleft palate. Then we have the coronal view. In the coronal view, we will see the nasal film thrums. We will see the nasal septum, the anterior lip, the posterior lip and again the chin. The axial or the transverse view, as if we say, will show the upper lip, the alveolar ridge and the primary palate. The secondary palate is usually not seen because it's a soft palate and may not be seen, uh, is usually not seen on the ultrasound. So this is the antenatal diagnosis showing the normal lips, but this is what we see on ultrasound, a cleft lip. So this is again an ultrasound picture showing a cleft lip. So when we see an ultrasound and the patient comes to us with this diagnosis and during the fourth month or fifth month or uh, after the anomaly ultrasound, Adam, the baby is defective, should I terminate the pregnancy? The answer is no. Uh, I will just start screen sharing. I think it's got closed. The answer is no. No, it is not an indication for uh, medical termination of pregnancy as it is if it is an isolated anomaly because this is a fully correctable uh, thing and it can be corrected post uh, delivery after the baby is born. The Smile Train program which is so successfully running which we can explain to the patient, explain to the relatives and counsel them, them that later on they will not even be able to diagnose that at birth such a problem was there. So it's a fully correctable uh, anomaly. So it is not an indication for termination if it is an isolated anomaly. But if it is associated with other syndromes, which is a fatal syndrome like trisomy, patau, Edwards or Down syndrome or other like Pierre Robin syndrome or other non-inherited uh, syndromes or inherited syndromes, then it can be an indication for termination. According to the new law, uh, up to 24 weeks, we can offer termination for such patients which are syndromic babies. Along with the cleft lip and cleft palate, if they have other fatal anomalies, then yes, it is an indication for termination. Thank you so much. So it is a fully correctable uh, disorder. As we can see in this slide, this is a newborn at the age of around one, uh, two to three years. She got corrected. And after that, we cannot even see that she ever had a cleft, pal a cleft lip at birth. Thank you so much. Thank you, dear Pratibha. That was a very, very good in-depth and elaborate uh, talk on Clip and palette. Um, thank you, Pratibha. Very you. excellent presentation. Uh, I would like to ask one question. Any drugs which we can start in a preconceptional period so that we can prevent this uh, other than folic acid? Folic acid, uh, actually, there are no drugs which are which can prevent cleft lip cleft palate, but th there are drugs which can cause cleft lip cleft palate. Some anti-epileptic drugs are known to be associated with cleft lip cleft palate, but there is no drug to prevent it as such. 
because folic acid we know prevents anencephaly prevents neural tube defects but there is no as drug as such which can prevent cleft lip of cleft palate it's a developmental defect mm -hmm. it is not drug related it is not deficiency related okay what are the chances of only uh, cleft palate instead of uh, cleft lip and cleft palate uh, chances of cleft is palate is there any isolated Ah, yes. Isolated chances. Yes, there can be isolated cleft palate. Its chances are much less compared to that of being associated with cleft lip. Also, isolated cleft palate is uh, very less commonly seen compared to a cleft lip plus cleft palate. The incidence exactly I cannot remember the numbers now, but uh, it is one in seven hundred, approximately one in seven hundred babies are suffering from either a cleft lip or a cleft palate. But cleft palate is isolated. Cleft palate is comparatively less common than the competition. Than the competition, okay. And it runs in yes. uh, families. Means uh, it is hereditary. So, what are the uh, chances? Yeah, of it is genetic. It is genetic. One generation? of the ideologies of cleft palate is genetic. Uh, exactly. I have. I do not know the numbers, but it is genetic. Okay. I cannot so, quote the numbers. So. So, any investigation you would like to do in uh, if she gives history of cleft palate in uh, family? Yes, if there is history of cleft lip or cleft palate in the family, yes, uh, we would again uh, do a detailed ultrasound at 13 weeks. Uh, we will tell the radiologist or the sonologist there is family history of cleft lip, cleft palate, and it needs to be seen as early as 13 weeks because palate develops at 13 weeks. Also, at a detailed anomaly scan by around 20 weeks. Again, we need to see the maxillary, uh, the upper lip, the lower lip, the nasal septum. The uh, All those things have to be very seen in great detail. Maybe a 3D can also be advised. It is general. Uh, is there any role of torch, torch infection? If she uh, gives history of torch infection... Yes. Is it affects to the uh, information of cleft lip or cleft uh, etiology? Uh, actually, infections are not an etiology for cleft lip. Actually, hmm. okay. No, I have not come across uh, infection being an etiology for cleft lip or cleft palate. Be because sometimes in rubella, rubella infection, toxoplasmosis uh, infection, the I if IgM positive, sometimes it may get reflected into uh, uh, cleft lip or cleft palate. Okay. okay. And Pierre one more question. Syndrome is there usually, any... Yeah. Pierre Robin syndrome usually is associated with Pierre this. Robin syndrome. Where they have micrognathia. Yeah. Yes, yes. Micro. Micro there are three. Other... Uh, okay, okay. Yes. Micrognathia, tongue may be uh, on the lower side. It may fall on yes. the uh, airway. So that yes. may cause uh, aspexia. Yes. That may be the cause in the Pierre, uh, uh, Pierre Robin. Is there any hearing problem? Which yes. Maybe ah, is it is there any hearing problem? Maybe associated with the cleft palate or yes, cleft lip? because these patients, these babies with cleft lip cleft palate have repeated infections because of uh, difficulty in swallowing, and also they this can they this infection can lead to the ears and can lead to even uh, ear means hearing loss. They can have ear infections, repeated ear infections. This can lead to hearing loss, and later on it can lead to speech loss also. So these are yes, they have a secretory type of otitis media. These children yes. have yes, yes. Okay. So how will you counsel at the birth to the parents? Yes. yes. We have to uh, counsel them. There is a small slide. We would like to just a minute, Pratima. We would also like to welcome Dr. Meena Gunjotikar, madam. She has joined. Welcome, madam. Hello. Thank you. Good evening, madam. Welcome, ma'am. Welcome. Yeah, good evening. Thank you. Uh, there is a small slide in my, uh, this thing, I will just, uh, 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 that, that will give us an idea about counseling for the because patient. Because yeah. the baby has cleft palate yes. or cleft lip hmm. and the feeding problem may. Yeah. So basically after we have, is the slide screen seen? No, Dr. Not no. yet. Okay. I will just, uh, yeah. I'll just do screen sharing one second. There is a small slide which will give us a very good idea about how do we counsel these patients.
Yeah. So once there is an antenatal diagnosis at 20 weeks after birth, we have to reassure the parents. Is the slide seen? Yes. 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 So we have yes, to reassure yes. the parents that it is a completely correctable anomaly. The lip repair can be done at three to four months. The palate repair can be done at eight to nine months. Early speech input at one year. Mm -hmm. Speech assessment at around 18 months to three years to five years. There is a multidisciplinary clinic. Alveolar bone grafts can be put. Alve uh, secondary surgery post adolescent growth spurt and discharge means uh, they can be followed up regularly and it can be completely corrected. Also, we can explain to them that the SMILE uh, train program, which is running nowadays, it's free of cost for the patients. They get everything done uh, at uh, zero billing and uh, it is only that they have to go and register themselves properly. Just uh, register with the photo of the child and uh, everything falls in place after that. Hello. Very well said, Pratima. Yes. So what, what is important because this is an aesthetic problem also. So it's very difficult for the yeah. parents to yeah. accept the baby when the baby is born undiagnosed antenatally with cleft lip or cleft palate. And so if diagnosed antenatally and if we counsel the patient and the relatives, especially the relatives also, very well yes. uh, with the prognosis of the case, I think the uh, percentage of continuation of pregnancy in these patients uh, has been observed very high. Yes. And these patients are also going to need psychosocial support, psychological support also, and peer group or social support. Mm. Yes. And yes. with all this treatment, the, we are going to have very good results for baby and baby can have normal or near normal life after the surgeries. We have to explain them and this acts very well for these patients. So the counseling treatment a very important part, as Dr. Vidgar said, asked a very important question. The counseling will be a very important part in management of left leap and palate. Yes, it is Thank very you. important to reassure the parents and the relatives that it is completely correctable mm -hmm. and uh, you have a lot of social support and it will also not cost you so much. As, so they don't have to be worried about it. Yes. Thank you, Pratibha. Very Thank nice so presentation. Much, sir. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rashmi, madam. Thank you. It was, uh, it was really delightful to be a part of this webinar. And I enjoyed it. To the next. Uh, we welcome you, Dr. Midam uh, Gunjotikar, madam. And uh, we, will, uh, we will be moving towards next uh, talk. Yes. Um, Dr. Puneet Batra will be talking on uh, oral health issues uh, in cleft lip and cleft palate. I, uh, I will request Dr. Meena Madam to kindly introduce Dr. Puneet Batra uh, to the house. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Dr. Puni Batra is MDS in Orthodontist in Ames, New Delhi, Principal Professor and Director of PG Board Studies, Cleft Orthodontist in GHRC, Mount Abu and San Paramananda Hospital, New Delhi, recipient of PP Jacob Awards and GK Kanan Awards by Indian Orthopedic Society, M. Ortho from Royal College of Surgeons, Edinburgh, and more than 125 publications in national and international journals to his credit. And he's past president of Indian Society of Cleft Lip Palate and Craniofacial Anomalies in 19 and 20. Now, trained in Artificial Intelligence in BRDO, Central Government nominee to DCI. And I request him to start his lecture. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, ma'am, for a uh, kind introduction. Uh, can uh, you allow me to share, share my screen? Yeah. Uh, so I want to thank Smile Train as well as, uh, uh, you know, Foxy for this initiative. Uh, this is something which is actually going to make a difference in the life of many children born with cleft lip and palate. And this Ma Maha Smile initiative is actually an initiative which is going to make a big difference. So congratulations at the onset for starting this program. And I'll be talking about something which is very important, which is addressing oral health issues in patients with orofacial clefts. Uh, basically, what happens is that, you know, while we are thinking about the lip and the palate, we forget that there are there, there are teeth in the oral cavity, which will eventually bring about a change in the smile. So, Federation Dental International, the World Dental Federation, defines oral health 
has a multifaceted ability to speak, smile, smell, taste, touch, chew, swallow and convey a range of emotions through facial expressions with confidence and without pain, discomfort and disease of the craniofacial complex. So oral health is multifactorial, but it is very important for our social well-being, not only in terms of health, but in social context as well. Now, you know, cleft treatment requires an interdisciplinary team care. So dentistry is a very important component of this care. And we all know that in cleft lip and palate children, the teeth are not regularly arranged. There will be some missing teeth. There will be some extra teeth. There will be small size teeth. There will be malformed teeth. So, you know, uh, getting a good smile, getting a patient to have teeth arranged properly so that they can chew and they can have a normal, uh, you know, uh, oral health is a difficult phenomenon. Also, in the timeline, which was very well explained uh, by the speaker before me, the cleft lip and palate treatment requires different timelines to be followed to give ideal care to the patient. Among the timeline, the first procedure which is done at birth is pre-surgical infant orthopedics, after which the lip surgery is done. Also, in the mixed dentition, we prepare the patient for alveolar bone grafting. Orthodontics is required to align teeth. And in some cases, orthognathic surgery is required to align the jaws in proper relationship. So, you know, it's a long phase of treatment. Have a look at this child who has a pre-maxilla which is lying to one corner. And in the first four months of birth, we have managed to get a good relationship and a good lip repair for the patient. Similarly. In the mixed dentition, we are doing orthodontics to align the arches to get a good, good bone graft. So in this patient, the iliac crest bone is taken, put in the right place and teeth erupt through the graft. Many patients require the upper jaw to be pulled out because the maxillary growth is deficient. And this is done again in the mixed dentition with orthodontic appliances. Patients require to align teeth. So you can look on the left side how teeth were and on the right side how they were after completion of orthodontic treatment. Similarly, in some children where the growth of the maxilla is deficient, you know, uh, we want to bring the maxilla forward an orthognathic surgical procedure is done wherein the maxilla is, uh, you know, split from the bones and brought forward and then attached with titanium plates. So, you know, cleft treatment is not... Uh, you know, uh, it's going to take a long time. And also this webinar is important because research says that oral health care of children, the gynecologist and the pediatric perspective is lacking because, you know, we as communities have not interacted so much. So, uh, you know, this initiative again takes a, a, a very important role. Similarly, obstetrics and gynecologist knowledge on the awareness of nasoalveolar molding in babies how it can help in improving outcomes is also not, uh, you know, uh, there because of lack of communication and interaction among the specialities. Now, oral health quality of life and dental caries in orofacial cleft in the Indian outlook has also shown that the quality of life of these patients may not be so good if oral health is not taken care of. So it's not only about teeth, it's about the quality of life. So when an infant is born and we are, we are doing pre-surgical infant orthopedics, it's very important for us to know that there is the mother's milk which the child is taking or any food which is being taken has accumulates in the cleft area. So it's very important to clean because we are thinking that there are no teeth. So what is the requirement for cleaning? A damp cotton bud or a wet gauze can be used to clean the gum pads and the cleft area. If left... This food will mix with the mucus secretion, forming a hard crust, causing infection. So, you know, when you're doing the palate repair or when you're closing the anterior part of the palate, you might land up into a problem and a fistula opening up just because that area had collection of food debris. So, what needs to be done is, you know, wash that area with cooled boiled water. As of ulceration bleeding as well as tooth eruption because you know when the baby is born the first tooth eruption sign is at six months so you know using a moist swab stick clean 
and you know uh, carefully insert it in the oral cavity clean that area apply soft paraffin to all the lip areas and the premaxilla whenever needed so it's very important that we take care of these infants as well now these infants have matured into adults and children but there is a problem the problem the possibility of a dry mouth so there is less natural cleansing tendency and also there is increased consumption of sweetened uh, uh, food as research shows and delayed oral clearance time so patients of cleft having dental anomalies couple up into a vicious cycle so there is early childhood caries there might be gum disease there might be periodontitis and of course the teeth are not aligned properly so there is malocclusion so you you are going to find a picture like this in many of the patients where it is not highlighted to them early childhood caries and you know these milk teeth are very important because they are nature's space maintainers and they maintain the space for the permanent teeth to erupt similarly the role of plaque in dental caries needs to be understood children having suboptimal oral hygiene consuming free sugars or fermentable carbohydrates the mouth remains in an acidic ph leading to dental caries so needs to be emphasized you know uh, dental film because of this sticky diet and susceptible tooth surface because the scar of the lip is not going to make it easy for the cleft child to brush it's not going to be easy because he has to lift the lip up and clean those areas properly especially the cleft defect area where the teeth are very close to each other and the child is fearful of moving his brush in that region so what can you do dietary fluoride intake fluoridated toothpastes fluoridation in water which the government has initiated in many parts and referral to dental specialists who can do local fluoride application so you know once in 6 months if you are referred to a dental specialist he is going to apply a layer of fluoride what it does is that this fluoride is absorbed onto the hydroxyapatite of enamel and this fluorohydroxyapatite is very strong so it does not allow caries to happen so quickly therefore you know prevention is better than cure also healthcare providers should try to prescribe sugar free medications wherever possible do not allow infants and children to go to sleep with a bottle with milk or sugary drink thumb sucking and pacifier use should be discouraged now one has to also keep an eye on white spot lesions now what do you mean by this you know there are demineralized areas on the tooth surface which because of this acidic intake have lost calcium so you know there is bacterial plaque accumulation in this area and this is the first stage of dental caries so so you know uh, if we are able to spot it early we can take action early so brown spots on the surface can be caries it is important to assess them and carefully diagnose them now what is gingivitis it, it you know early stages of, of of gum disease are called gingivitis so what will be the first signs of gingivitis the gums around the teeth become red swollen and bleed when brushed so you know uh, the child will become more scared while brushing because bleeding has happened so that you know that's the first sign that the gums are inflaming there might be bad breath and so you know blood on the toothbrush is a first sign that we need to encourage good oral hygiene a regular dental checkup and professional cleaning and scaling will help to clean these teeth so that these pockets do not become permanent the advanced stage of gum disease is periodontal disease so we do not want to progress to a stage where the bone around the teeth is lost and these teeth become mobile because like i said in cleft children there might be a lot of teeth missing there might be anomalous teeth we don't want to lose them because these are the ones which will help us in getting the permanent oral oral hygiene and oral health for these patients in future now how can this be prevented by good brushing and interdental cleaning regular dental checkup and empowering people to take care of good health and promotion of good behavior good behavior means you know uh, when we have eaten food at night we brush at night 
So twice brushing is a very important way of keeping bacteria not damaging our tooth surface. So Smile Train started something which is unique in the world. It's called the STOP program. What do you mean by STOP? See, when you lose a tooth, what happens? You, you, you have to replace one tooth. Replacement of one tooth may require an implant. It might require a bridge. It, it becomes a burden of care. So, you know, a cleft patient who's undergoing a lot of procedures will need to have more dental procedures. And many of these procedures are very costly. Do prevention. We will be able to actually do a big service to these patients. So, what does this program entail? It entails age-appropriate anticipatory guidance counseling. You know, for that particular age, how do we anticipate that what might be the factors which might lead to caries, gum disease or periodontitis and take do good counseling at the right time. Prevention and minimum invasive treatment. Meaning we found that caries was beginning. So we used a minimum invasive technique and uh, you know prevented further development of this caries which could lead to tooth loss finally. And definitive restorative care where teeth were already decayed or lost. So, prevention of oral uh, disease by counseling and education, oral health prevention services through minimum interventions, and definitive restorative treatment with composites or crowns and extractions where indicated. So, let's look at what is age appropriate. What do you mean by this? A child from 0 to 3 years. We need to teach the child's gums to be cleaned with cloth to the parents. Brushing with fluoridated toothpaste when the first tooth erupts. However, the toothpaste should not be very much in quantity. It should just be less than a pea size so that it's not ingested inside. It's, you know, it's spitted outside, but it's acting in the local area, making this enamel more strong. Avoid honey or sweetened beverages in bottles. Avoid thumb or pacifier sucking, nail biting habit. Check for white spot or brown spots on the teeth so that we are sure that caries is not beginning. Then, what is the right thing to do from the age of 3 to 6 years? Brush twice daily. Brush front and back teeth with fluoridated toothpaste. Only a pea-sized toothpaste. Cleanse mm -hmm. the mouth after every meal. And final nighttime feed. So, you know, night brushing is a very critical factor. Actively discourage habits. A patient from 6 to 12 years, you know, he is school going and is entering, going to enter the teenage soon. Good routine of tooth brushing and interdental cleaning. Use interspace brush in the cleft area so that you are able to please clean those areas where normally your brush was not going. Avoid fizzy drinks and karyogenic snacks. If you are, you know, if you have taken it already, you should rinse your mouth immediately after taking. Now, visit an orthodontist because you are going to he is going to prepare your teeth for an alveolar bone graft tips for oral hygiene visit the dentist regularly at least once a year avoid eating sweets cakes and biscuits use a small headed soft brush to clean teeth clean carefully in the cleft space as well without worrying avoid sweeteners in the child's bottles massage the scar area from the nose to the lip three times a day because if this scar becomes more you know it's uh, uh, not flexible the lip will not move choose healthy snacks like fruits plain crackers plain yogurt or cheese use fluoride toothpaste rinse and spit do not swallow clean inside the nose using the moist swab stick or bud because this is an area which will get to lodge bacteria which will act finally on the teeth as well. Wash with cooled boiled water. Carefully insert the appliance slightly inside when you are giving a molding appliance and apply Vaseline on the sides of the lips to prevent cracking and inspect the mouth for any ulceration. So prevention and minimum invasive treatment are the key. So you can see in the picture below what has happened. A tooth is trying to show that you know you can see the black spot that is the beginning of caries. What have we inserted? It's a Pitt and Fisher sealant. Now this sealant will not allow more food to retain in that area and therefore not damage the tooth surface further. 
when caries has actually happened we need to restore it well so that there are no sharp margins so that no food gets lodged more and we lose on oral health further so let me conclude what is the key point brush twice daily limit foods containing sugars to meal times only choose water or low fat milk as a beverage choose fruits rather than fruit juice to meet the recommendations for health obtain necessary dental treatment you know at the right time avoid saliva sharing behaviors like sharing spoons or uh, tasting uh, baby food by a drop pacifier by mouth avoid saliva sharing behaviors in children using toys and pacifiers and visit an oral health professional every 6 to 12 months thank you very much for a patient hearing and see the impact this collaboration thank you thank you sir very nice and explain you have explained everything about the uh, uh, age related anticipatory guidance counseling nicely explain everything thank you sir Mina, ma'am, for your comments, please. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Batra sir. To increase the smiles on the face of parents and babies, it is a very nice project to increase the smiles of all family. Very nicely explain all the steps of oral hygiene. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Explain very nicely to increase the smiles of the family and parents and children. It is very nice project to have all the stop project for the health of oral hygiene. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Meena, ma'am, and thank you, Virkar sir, for chairing the session. uh i would like to thank amox rashmi madam and konkar sir for collaborating with solapur obgy society for this webinar ma'am over to you ma'am uh, for the further proceedings thank you monika thank you dr punil patra sir it was a very uh, very good talk and uh, i would like to extend my special thanks to our chief guest today uh, secretary uh, Foxy, Secretary General Foxy, Dr. Madhuri Patel, and guest of honor, Dr. Paradeshi sir, for gracing the webinar. I would like to thank our esteemed speakers, Dr. Pratibha Valdava and Dr. Punil Patra sir, for elaborate talks. I would like to thank esteemed chairpersons, Dr. Vivek Vidhar sir and Dr. Meena Gunjantika madam, for their presence today. Special thanks to convener, Dr. Sujit Kumar. Coordinator Dr. Monica Desai, and most important, last but not least, Renu Mehta Madam, Leela Madam, Science Integra Smile Train Foundation, and most enthusiastic and cooperative uh, uh, organizer, Miss Shutika, Shutika, who takes a lot of effort in organizing these webinars. So thank you very much, and uh, very much, and special thanks to. Aesthetic and Sexual Medicine Chairperson Dr. Madan Kamre, who has joined this webinar today. Uh, thank you very much for your presence, sir. So have a nice time and uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Rashmi, ma'am, Monica, ma'am. Thank you, Parma, ma'am, Rashmi, ma'am. Thank you, Puneet, sir. Thank you, Rashmi, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Pratibha. Thank, thank you, you Rain, ma'am. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Sujit sir, thank you. Shutika is there. Shutika, she is here. Yes, ma'am. Papers. Yes, I am here. So, thank you, Shutika. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am.